Hey there, this is Ray with Ray's Guy with the Drake Defense Con and apart from the non-working prototype of the Drake Vulture, the attention has been focused on this new cute little thing here, the Drake Mule. And everybody seems to agree it's undeniably cute and fun to drive around, but it leaves on more than a few folks speculating, well, what's it actually good for? What actually is better about using a mule to compared to, you know, just moving boxes around with a tractor beam like we have been? So I decided to borrow one from the Drake folks who were kind enough to let me have one and also have the best shipper can around one of these things and at my mind is the Cutlass Black. And I would pick the mission I thought was the best possible use case for having a mule around and then run through it for reals. Less talking and more doing. Now, why do I think the Cutlass Black is the best medium shipper carrying around a mule? Well, look at this. Not only can you drive it up the ramp, but once you do and get it inside, there's enough room to completely turn it around inside the ship. So you can be go straight in and then, then go straight out. Not only that, but you can also exit from either the side doors if needed. So as to which activity did I settle on as the best candidate for using a mule? Well, I picked this one, the Time Salvage Mission. Now, if you haven't done one of these before, you go to the wreck site, pick up something somewhere between three to five of these small boxes, and then bring them to a scrapyard for proper disposal. But as soon as they are taken out of that carrier, a timer begins to count down. If you don't get it delivered in time, then boom. By the way, going boom while being carried in a mule will damage the mule, but will not destroy it or hurt the driver, which is more than can be said about carrying them around if they blow up in your hands. Now, why did I pick this? Because it involves handling multiple boxes at the same time in the same way, both on the pickup and at the drop-off. But most importantly, because the mission where every second counts, so faster is a clear advantage. Actually, the longest part of this mission is the approach. Fortunately, the timer hasn't started yet, so you can just quantum to the nearest known point and then just go as fast as you can to the wreck site. Once you're there, you have to find a flat space to land nearby, to the places where the box markers are. Then you lower the doors. Put it right in there. All right, line of feet are down, doors open. Get out of the seat. Run to the back. Get in the mule. and drive it out the door. Now normally at this point you would be running on foot, getting the items out of the stabilization crate and then slinging them around with a multi-tool tractor beam to get them near your ship and then from near the ship into the cargo area. But with this you just drive near the crates out, presumably much faster than you can run. Okay, here we go, nice and easy. Okay, just line it up here, just kind of really nice and easy. Okay, hop out. Uh, where are they? There they are. I'll go get them. Okay. Well, yeah, there is one out. Grab the box and then place it in the mule's rack. Don't place it in. All right, that's one in. Now get another one. Place it in. I'm going to run back here. Get a third one. There we go. Uh, place that in where it belongs. Then Fourth one, got to come around the other side for space for it. And uh, there we are. Okay, all four in. Let me run around here to the front and open up the door and hop on in. Now, if there is one hint to give all you watchers out there, do not use the place action of the crate or just drop it in there using a tractor beam. The thing is that that has it just lying there loose and it can bounce out of the first bump. Not good. 
Instead, use the place function of the mule itself. That puts the box in the rack and locks it down so it can't bounce out. Obviously, that's what you want, so that's what you do. Always use the place function of the mule itself. Now, this time I was lucky that all the boxes were in the same part of the rack, but more typically, they would be you use the mule to go to one area, load up a couple of the boxes, then drive the mule to the other one, load up the rest. And the boxes are often more than 100 meters apart. And then it's back to the Cutlass Black, drive up the ramp. All right, get it lined up just right for the door. There we go, nice. Okay, I now get them in, spin them around. All right, facing right out so I can meet quick at the end. Right there, right there. Okay, let's get off this planet and on to our next one. Spin it around to be ready at the other end. Yeah, close up the doors here. There we go, very good. Hop out here. All right, close up the door. Out to the front, get in the cockpit again. There we go. And then straight to the cockpit for takeoff and close after closing the doors. Now, once we reach the salvage outpost, normally I'd be trying to make a really close in landing to the doors to be able to push the boxes out to the drop off with as little effort as possible, but with the tractor beam. But with this mule instead, I just have to look for a nice path to the office then, and I'll not worry so much about having being a few meters longer. Line her up real easy. Then it's out of the seat. Time in the mule. Drive to the foot of the stairs. Hoo! Ha ha! Oh, bounce around a bit here. In fact, my biggest mistake trying to do this the first time was thinking that the mule had bought me so much time that I didn't have to keep my hurry on. But uh, keep your hurry on. All right, just get her up to the door. I'll go around this door. All right, nice to the side. But can't drive it up the stairs. Doesn't really help any to get it up the stairs. Then it's hop out, grab the boxes one at a time, and drop them off. Which, since I did not delay, is done with plenty of time. All right, let me get one out. Over to the box. All right, one down the chute. Let's go back, get the next one. Here we are, all right, let's go back up. Coming around here, just punch the button. Come on, come on, time's a wasting. All right, put it in the second cute. Down the slot it goes. I'm really I'm liking this little guy. All right, get the third box. Running around here. Punch your old button, Rooney. There you go. Next one down. All 
Do, do, do. One more, one more. Just last one here. Let me get it out. You see, we've got about three minutes on the on the clock still. So plenty of time up here. Punch the button and slide her on down. That's looking good. All right, we're done. So what's my verdict about using the mule for this mission? Was it faster? It sure felt so, even though I wasn't able to do a good side-by-side -side comparison with the exact same mission using a tractor beam only. Did it feel less hectic and pressured? Again, yes. Was it so much better that it was worth buying a craft just to make this one type of mission easier? That's a tough answer. And my gut reaction is, is it worth it only if there's something changing about how we're handling cargo that will also make it useful than just using a tractor beam? So if you buy it, buy it with an eye towards the future benefits rather than simply the immediate ones. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Ray with Ray's Guide. And now for an update on our Grow the Channel Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are approaching 75% of the subscriber goal and 70% of the membership goal to give away someone's choice of either the Anvil Liberator, the Ship Shipping Ship or Shipping Your Ships, or the Misc Odyssey, the Long Duration Exploration Carrier. Members are entered automatically, and if the winner was a member as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing date, they will win both of the ships. For everybody else, just be a subscriber and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the material Ray was moving in the mission. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.